Hi, I'm Tankfish, and I have realized that 99.9% .9 of people who watch my videos are subscribed. So, oh, I mean, I mean, 99.9% .9 of people who watch my videos are not subs are, are not subscribed. So please subscribe. I need to feed my goldfish. Anyway, welcome to World Zero, a game where you can commit genocide, perform mass deforestation, eradicate endangered animal species, steal properties, and much more. <laughs> However, despite being called World Zero, World Zero is nowhere to be found in this game, which makes me feel bamboozled. But I forgive the creators because this game is anime. Cool game, 100 out of 10. Just like my life, there's no lore nor backstory. But since it's anime, let's just pretend we got hit by a truck and got isekai'd. Just like any RPG, the first 30 minutes of gameplay consists of trying to find on Google which of the three starter classes is the best. It's Arcane Mage, by the way. And make your character look as edgy or what? as possible. After that, you'll be teleporting the game as an armed homeless person whose sole purpose is to murder, level up, get new stuff so you can murder more. Once you have murdered everything in every dungeon of a world, you can unlock the the next world and come in genocide there as well. Each world has a unique set of monsters and bosses, and by that I mean the lazy ass devs just recolored the existing models. Picking a class in this game is like picking which brand of toilet paper to buy, because you're probably gonna buy them all anyways. Classes in this game are like wives, you can switch them anytime, meaning if you don't like a class you can just ditch it like how I ditched my kid and start playing as another one without losing any progression. You unlock classes with class tickets and you can get them from quests, chests or bosses. The classes are divided into four tiers. The starter classes are some ghetto put together classes that you'll ditch after playing for 30 minutes. Starring the defender without a shield, the sword master who clearly has a master of the sword, and the arcane mage whose arcane magic is green. I mean, come on, we all know arcane magic is supposed to be purple. They're like discount Chinese version of the higher tier classes because they only have two skills and no ultimate attack. They're disappointments that everyone will ditch as soon as possible, like my children because I ditched them. Next, there's the better starter classes, aka tier 1 classes. It will literally take someone with a somewhat functional brain 30 minutes to get these classes, so yeah. Congratulations to those of you who spend time searching for the best starter class, because you just wasted your time for nothing. The tier 1 class includes the Guardian, who is supposed to be the tank but deals so much f***ing damage that you might as well call it a tank. Get it? Because tanks deals a lot of damage. <coughs> The Elementalist, aka the Demolition Expert. All their skills are AoE attacks, literally Michael Bay's wet dream came true. Then there's the Dual Wielder, the wannabe Kirito, literally has Star Boss Ghost Team. Bless their f***ing ultimate. It is the class of choice for the edgy high school teens and they're literally everywhere. Next is the tier 2 classes who compared to their previous generation are f***ing boring, kind of like the Fortnite kids compared to the Minecraft <laughs> First we got Paladins, and their first kill already shows how f***ing boring they are, block. Wow, really? Such a f***ing unique skill, am I right? Even the Chinese government has that. But hold on, if you read the description... Yes, turns out, block is actually Uno no you reverse card in disguise, and gives Paladins big dick energy since they literally do not have to dodge. Paladins can also group heal and fire lasers by using the power of God and anime. Then we have the Mages of Light, whose only job is to keep their team alive and cutting themselves. They have this dumb attack mechanism where if they run out of balls to Throw, they look like a f***ing dumbass slapping air, and cutting themselves allow them to get and play with more balls. After there's the Berserkers. All their skills are AoEs and just like real gamers, their ult is Rage. When they rage, they get attack buffs and can cause California forest fires. Last and foremost, we have the Demon class, the class of the real edgelords. Not only they use sights, they also float, and can somehow fall. They can switch between larger swings and smaller swings. Wow. Amazing. And because they don't have a life, they have the ability to lifesteal. Also, their ult turns on black. <laughs> to be honest, the classes in this game are all over the place. We've got a tank without aggro skill and a DPS with aggro skill. There is no best class per se, except paladins. Paladins are like anime thighs. Perfect. <laughs> Different classes have different gears. No shit. You get gears by brutally murdering bosses or through quests, but those quests usually require you to brutally murder something anyway. The gears are classed into five tiers. Shit. Still shit. Kind of shit. Usable. And legendary. The three shit tiers belong in the garbage dump and they shall burn in hell. If you're using anything below the usable tier, then RNGs must really hate you. You can also get perks from your gears. The shit and still shit tiers offer no perk. That's why they're shit. The kind of shit here offers one perk. That's why it's kind of shit. 
The usable tier offers 2 and the legendary tier offers 3 and a small chance of getting legendary perks. And of course, the higher tier your equipments are, the more time you can usually upgrade them. The upgrading is an RNG system, so if RNGs just really hate you, you'll never get that level 10 until you spend your whole life saving. And if you're curious about what the perks do because the devs clearly forgot to put descriptions of them in the game, go on wiki, I'm too lazy. The pets in this game are considered as gears because they don't have rights and are properties. You get pets by hatching pet eggs and each world offers a unique pet egg. And for some reason you can even get mammals from those eggs. Interesting. Some pets are literal biological weapons and can cause a nuclear war all on their own. Some can change the way you play the game and some are just useless. If you somehow get a useless pet, just sell it or trade it off like a slave and get a new one. You can upgrade your pets by force feeding it and every time it levels up 10 levels it transforms into the next tier. I'm gay! And just like Gears, it gives you perks depending on its tier. Some pets are rarer than the others, and what you get depends on your relationship with Iron Jesus. If you have sucked his dick before, then you'll likely get a red dragon on your first demonic egg. If you have not, then, then you'll probably just get sheeps. A lot of sheeps. F***ing useless. The World 5 offers a drastically different dungeon style. These dungeons have 15 floors and you get to fight a boss every 3 floors. On the last floor, there's the final boss. Now after you reach level 60, you can no longer level up by collecting XP. You level up by praying to Iron Jesus. In this game, there's a small chance that you'll get a gear that is one level higher than your level. And after level 60, if you do get such a gear, you level up and you repeat the process until your max level. Since XP is no longer required, people just skip through all the monsters in the tower, just like me skipping my taxes. There are also chests in which you can find the demon class ticket and eggs. Once the key and the exit has been found, you have exactly 70 seconds to get your fat ass to the exit or you'll be snapped by Thanos. And there is always gonna be this one greedy mother who has to get that chest in the trap room when the exit is activated and kill you in the process. Don't be mad, you can always track his IP and send a hitman to him. You can only get the legendary drops from the final boss and it drops 4 chests instead of 2. Nice. There's not much grind, you can pretty much finish the whole game in a day or two if you sweat like a fat man being chased by a lion in the desert. Most people never run out of golds because there is really no need to upgrade gears all the time since the game is f***ing EASY! The pet food shouldn't be a problem either unless Iron Jesus gives you the middle finger and keeps giving you trash. And by the time you finish all the dungeons of a world, your quests are usually all completed. To get to level 75, most people don't even do the tower since it's faster if you just hop around servers and do world bosses instead. If you have a lot of bull bucks, you can literally skip to level 60 and call it a day. And by double chest, you can get to level 75 faster. The only real grind people have to go through is the mount grind. But of course, if you have bull bucks, you can just buy a better one at the shop. And while you're at it, buy some edgy or questionable outfit. Other than that, I don't really see any people grinding other than some perfectionists trying to get full level 75 legendary max upgraded equipments and pets with legendary perks for all their classes. I guess some maniacs also farm for the battle pass. I am certainly not one of them because I have a life. <laughs> Uh, this game is honestly extremely easy, I probably lost one or two brain cells while playing. But it was a well-made game nonetheless, and I enjoyed it. Too bad I couldn't AFK- OH WAIT I DID! 